So approximately where I'm standing, I had to be, I don't know if I was like nine, 10. No, I was in elementary school. It was coming around this curve and I was hit by a car on my bicycle. The lady that came was driving so fast and we normally come around because this curve is like a blind side. And I, I got hit right here. And as you can see the power lines, I went up approximately maybe 20 feet, and landed like right here. <laughs> Again, this is one of the neighborhoods I grew up in and I landed like right here. And it's so funny I say that, look at this. There's a car right there that you can see that is damaged. So interesting. But that didn't happen to the little beetle. I was hit by like a little doom buggy. I don't know what you want to call it, but I was hit by a car, landed, did not go to the hospital. I don't know why, when you grew up in the hood or something like that, a lot of people don't really, I feel like I was just in shock, but I went up so high, came down, and I feel like I either came down on my head or something. And I survived it. My mom came, she was like, <laughs> and if any of you know that grow up certain parts, your mom, what the fuck is you doing in the road anyway? And I'm like, lady, I just came right there around that corner on my bike. This lady was flying around the corner. And people were telling her that. Cause we have a little dude just run out of nowhere. Oh, whoa, bro. So, more about this place right here, and I'll turn the camera around, is that we used to play football right here. One of the funny things about this, where you see this water running at this tunnel, is that we used to go in there, like no shoes, I'm telling you, you know if you grew up in, in you know the rough parts or whatever. Yep, we used to go into there, little kids, and come out the other side. Yep, we didn't have no playground at the time, but we used to go through there. And I remember one time I, stepped, I uh, stepped on a piece of glass. And when I stepped on a piece of glass, the glass was probably maybe, probably from here to my thumb. And it went in my foot and I pulled it out fast because I stepped on it so fast I had to pull it out. And I remember, because we live, in this place right here. Um, I don't know if, yeah, someone came and got me. One of my mother's friends came and got me. And I, when I got here, he <laughs> put me on the sink and they went and got salt, like table salt. And what he did was he began to, I kid you not, still have the scar on my foot. He began to pour the salt on my foot up under hot water. I'm telling myself, is this some type of World War II tactic or survival tactic? What the fuck? And so that being said, when that happened, I was little. And let me tell you something. Did not go to the hospital. That salt did heal my wound. It closed it up. So that being said, going back to where I grew up at, this is one of the apartments. This is actually one at the bottom. I'll show y'all. There's one on the side right here and one on the bottom and the front. We stayed at the one at the front. And the funny thing was so significant about this place is that a lot of things happened here when I was young, like really deep. So this is 409B. As you can see, yeah, it's a little rundown, but some of my best friends stayed here. Uh, it's so funny, I was introduced to my first Ouija board, had no idea what that is. I believe that's how you pronounce it. Um, what makes this area or this place so significant is that there was a lot of abuse in the home 
Um, I mean, I experienced my mom like throwing Clorox in her boyfriend's face. And I'm like, Clorox, yeah, Clorox, what you wash with? It didn't blind them. But the thing about that place is so many things happen to where you saw a lot of people doing drugs. You know, you're a kid, you're just not, you know, you're just not, um, you know, I couldn't even put into words. The, the reason why I love making these videos and, and coming back, returning to these places is because of the pain I went through and what I experienced when I was a child. Um, uh, my other two sisters at the moment. Uh, the thing about this place is that before these trees were here, this road specifically, I used to get like, you know how you can just pick up a little rock, a little orange rock or whatever, chalk. And I actually created like that, a chalk, piece of chalk. And on this road where I'm standing, I actually drew out a Mustang. And cause our neighbor had a Mustang. And I actually drew it out, like did my own sketch of it, which I felt like it was no different than what you see now when people are doing a chalk or a 3D chalk on the ground. And a lot of which happened here, again, I am approximately like a foot over, I mean, the back street is literally, two streets over is where the elementary school that I was uh, talking about or sharing to you guys about. And when I needed to escape this place, I had the elementary school to go to. And so the thing what makes that significant is that, again, seeing so much uh, abuse, so much uh, verbally, physically abuse going on took a toll uh, on how my behavior or how I express myself uh, emotionally, verbally, and physically. Uh, one of my other childhood friends stayed right beside us. So what's so interesting about this, the guy that dated my mom or was seeing my mom, they would fight so much. But the funny thing is the guy that she dated, his dad stayed here. And his dad dated one of my mom's childhood friends. And they both would abuse the women that they were with. So the other significance to all of this is that I share these things so to tell people that your darkness, your pain, you know, you don't have to stay there. You have to be the light to uh, shine. You have to be the rainbow. You are chosen to be the rainbow in someone else's storm. Now, not too far over a couple buildings was one of my mom's friends. At the moment, you know, when you're young, you're, I would say naive, but you're not just naive. You're like a sponge. You're like a, a just a portal of love. And you're just simply embracing everything, taking on everything as a child, not knowing what is good for you or what is really going to affect you as you get of age. But this place again, um, the mother I uh, came through, her friend here lived here. I had no idea what crack and dope and all this other stuff was. I remember this place specifically because I used to come um, and she would like tell me, you know, this is where one of her friends would, um, she would see me and she would touch on me, like rub me and be like, oh, your son's so beautiful, he's so handsome. I'm young, I'm in elementary school. And I remember that specifically how every time she comes around, she would be overly, uh, I guess, sexual in a way, like touching, in a touching way. And that actually, I wasn't okay with it, but I also felt like my mom should have protected me from, you know, women like that. Um, but you see it as it's okay because it's your mom, friend, or associate. But also the thing about this house is that the lady had three younger boys that were younger than me. And me probably being maybe, I say I had to be seven or eight at a time. And um, her sons all were in diaper, again, they were younger than me. So they would go out 
I would go around this building right here that was because it's one in the front and one on the side that goes upstairs. <clears throat> and I would go up there and I'm gonna put the camera down too that'll make it better. Yes. Whoa. So I would go up there. Let me see, can I get this position right? Oh, this would be better. Perfect. So, I would go up there to the, go around there. You know, as a little kid, all our kids, again, was in diapers because they were close in age. But I would go around this place, and my mom, you know, it'd be late night. She'll be like, hey, go in here. You know, y'all just stay in here. Take care of such and such and such. And me, I'm young. We don't even have, uh, I don't even remember, like, certain stuff about food or whatever. But we would go in there, and, um, I would have to watch them all night. Basically, maybe till they fell asleep. I do remember giving one of the kids bottles because he was one of the younger kids. But they would be gone all night. This is like one of the memories that I do remember or recall. Because again, when I got hit and hit uh, by the car on a bike, that also affected my memory. And those that don't know when you have concussions, it can affect your memory and you can have some type of memory loss. But that being said, I do remember that specifically how I used to have to watch these three little kids at a young age. So I had to grow up real early. And a lot of us did like when you're young. And again, sharing this, now I'm at a better place to see why my journey is the way it is and why I'm grateful that again, um, experiencing this is not so much of a uh, painful anymore. It's much of a a guiding light for me to see why it is I'm doing what I'm doing so I can share my message with everyone. So, um, again, I saw it as naive, but it wasn't so much of naive. It was so much of um, just a kid being a kid, learning and seeing how my past is somewhat my future because I'm learning these things. My pain, spirit was reminding me that your pain is going to be gained. You're gonna gain, you know, recognition. You're gonna gain more awareness of why it is that you had to experience these dark moments. And um, again, not, but just one building over. It's so funny, cause all the buildings, wow, I just, see, I just noticed something. Oh, I'm on the camera, not even on the camera. All of these buildings begins with four. And one of the necklaces that I wear is like 444. That's so interesting. 406. Wow. So, the significance about that, oh yeah, these actually are three. Like, you see this building? It's one in the front, one on the side, and then someone stays in the back. That's so interesting. I never really paid attention to that till again now. Um, so it's like, actually like a three, you can call it an apartment, but it's like three people can live in each one. But so many things happened here. And school at that moment was such, um, growing up in elementary was so much of a, um, an escapism in a way. As much as I didn't like it, but a lot of what I experienced in the childhood and with my mom and the man that she was with, again, this, the thing about the other place that I grew up in, I remember this just even being here. It's like I can channel the energy there were certain moments I would get up and there's a UPS truck going by, so I'm gonna say it after he comes back. But, so, I do remember one memory of the, the, the other the apartment I lived at, that I would get up, I remember getting up certain mornings and not having no idea my mom was, you know, people that do know people that are battling drugs or on drugs. I had no idea that she, uh, when I got up, I remember specifically like closing my eyes, just getting up and opening the refrigerator. And I remember that there was only a toaster, strudel, t toaster strudel in the freezer. In the, kit, in the refrigerator, it was probably maybe ketchup and mustard and maybe like, like a little thing of Kool-Aid. That was it. 
So yes, I had to, I've experienced young what it is to be without um, food or having to experience that. Um, I don't see it as poor, I see it as a sense of um, the struggle that you, you know, you're with someone, your mother that's going through drug addiction and battling with